And while we move into the Romanos now, uh, we talked about the first two episodes a couple weeks back. Uh, Matthew Weiner's uh, first show since Mad Men. Um, this is a series that's uh, anthology series with different uh, episodes that are loosely tied together with the overall theme of people being related to the Romanovs, the royal uh, German turned Russian family that was assassinated in the early 1900s. Um, yeah, the Romanovs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where where do we even begin with this man i mean it's it's hard to talk about because there's not really a through line for the season right. well honestly i think where you start is is anyone else talking about this show uh, <laughs> this was a show that eight weeks ago was very hyped up because again matthew weiner's follow-up he's despite the uh personal issues with with weiner that we'll get to shortly um he's a hyped up auteur you know, from the Golden Age of Television, it's his new show. It matters. Mm -hmm. Extended cast of, of studs. It matters. And yet, after some lukewarm buzz from those initial reviews, uh, the show just faded away. Like, there's not even that many, like, series wrap-up pieces on the big culture sites. It's just like, I don't think anyone's clicking on the on the pieces to be to matter. You know? Mm -hmm. it's, and it's just... It's, it's weird to think, like, how did this get messed up? Why didn't it work? And I have some ideas about that. But, yeah, I just think the show ultimately was uh, far less remarkable uh, than people expected. And I don't think it, it's terrible or anything, but it just was a disappointment. I think you, I know most people would agree with that. Yeah, you know, we, we talked about how neither one of us really watched uh Matt. i mean i've watched Mad Men. i didn't finish the series um but i've watched a number of the seasons and the thing i think i liked most about Mad Men was just kind of being in that world and i think in each episode he does a really good job of building the world and feeling like you're a part of where wherever you're thrown into you know whether it's house of special purpose where you feel this real sense of isolation along with christine hendrix christine hendrix um in this right. house on this crazy set or it's um was it bright and uh expectation where you're kind of running around new york with amanda p or um <laughs> Panor panorama where you're in was it mexico city i think it was or yeah uh, yeah so there's it, he does a really good job of that but i think where this really lacks is it each episode it really doesn't like makes sense a lot of times it has this twist almost at the end of every single episode and a lot of times you either have to like kind of like stretch yourself to be like okay i guess i can see that happening or it's just like what like yeah you know, i just mentioned uh the house of uh special purpose with christina hendrix which i was pumped for because christina hendrix on Mad Men was like absolutely electric she's she's dying away i think uh the episode gave me very like a get out y type feel feels it was very kind of just like a psychological confusing thriller where I, I literally had no idea what the fuck was happening by the end and like <laughs> good or bad it was fun to watch but then she actually dies and i'm like is this even real what to believe um it she dies of fucking fright like what and i guess that, that's a callback because she says like oh that that could never happen so i guess that's supposed to be like the irony of it Got apparently it. <laughs> yeah, but like, is that even a is that even good storytelling? Like, I, I feel like a, to a lot of these, like, the points of them were kind of lost in some of the absurdity of the episodes, and uh, I, I left pretty disappointed in this series overall. Um, were I guess maybe were there any episodes you felt were really well done or that you liked a lot? Yeah, you know, I agree that House of Special Purpose uh, ends on just a strange, hard to for C note but i actually yeah. think that's one of my favorite episodes regardless yeah. uh, i thought isabel huper was uh very good in that mm -hmm. and throughout the whole show this is a very expensive show uh, and you can see that on the sets on the locations it, yeah it, it's beautiful and you're in these extravagant buildings or you know in cities wherever you are and it's great and i thought uh it really came together in episode three um you know other than that it's like an episode like episode four expectation with uh amanda pete i just like i'm watching it the whole time and it's just so anticlimactic you know <laughs> and it was the most amanda pete episode you could possibly have just right. like 
She's yeah. just being ridiculous the whole time. And there's like twice on this series that it's like surprise pregnancy comes up. But I'm like, we did not need that a second time after episode yeah. one. I thought it was fine. Episode one. Right. Mm-hmm. And then like the only time the show got any traction after the premiere was for the wrong reasons. But episode five, bright and high circle. Yeah. Where it's like this referendum on me too in the worst way possible. Again, coming from a creator who is accused of misconduct. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like, and like, and like, you know, it's funny if you take that, that those, that problem in episode five, which is, um, you know, like the spreading false witness, you know, you're ruining reputations, you know, it's like, what about the men, right? Like that, that's kind of the take and mm-hmm. you're just fumbling the ball. Even if you're trying to say <laughs> something succinct, it's just not coming right. across well, you know, to be charitable. Mm-hmm. Um, but my problem with that episode in general, when I started thinking about this throughout the whole show is by and large, everybody on the show is quite wealthy, right? Mm-hmm. The character. And yet, we don't see anything relatable on this show. And that's not unlike a show I fucking love this year called Secession. The problem was Secession was super entertaining and well <laughs> after the third episode. Romanoffs is not that. And it's just like, oh, you have your doubts about your private piano teacher? None of us have private fucking piano teachers for our kids who come to our, our big-ass home. We don't fucking mm-hmm. understand that problem. Right. You know? And it's just... <laughs> It's like a, throughout, like Amanda Amanda Pete's thing. It's like, oh, you're wealthy, and then you're mad about your stuck up daughter who's even more wealthy. Like, right? I, I just could, and like you've got a problem with like, oh, I couldn't relate, I couldn't get it. I think if if the show, if the messages, as we said, if the payoffs were better, it wouldn't be an issue. But because mm-hmm. those, that, that's not a strength either, it just all comes to a head. So yeah, I was just very disappointed, man. Yeah, you know, I I think when I come back to the show, the the episode that maybe will sit with me the most and more probably for the question it posed more than the actual episode was end of the line with Catherine Hahn and uh, J.R. Ferguson um, it, where they're going to Russia to get a, a child, uh, adopt a child. And right. they're the child that they're given the first time is uh, it seems like there's something wrong with the kid. And then Catherine Hahn's character uh was it anika or anka is not sure um she wants to take the kid so uh, that more than anything just posed the moral question i think is really interesting but the episode itself i I think was a little long there were parts that were very superfluous or just like didn't make sense to the episode like where she's down in the bar after they have the fight and he's chasing a dog around like i know that there's some symbolism in there towards like how desperate he is to have a family and how logically or how she's seeing the world and seeing what could be for this child if she leaves it. But like, it's there's so many like moments like that where I'm just like, you don't fucking need this. Like you don't need to have the episode be an hour and 30 minutes when you could get it done in an hour, have be much more succinct and probably cut out some problematic parts. And then ending with the one that holds everything, which I mean, interesting story up until the ending which then kind of just uh blew everything up and uh the the story or the purpose he got across and or what it was trying to say about transgender people was totally lost in the fact that you then use their identity which it I guess this whole series is about exploring identity in different ways um but you use this transgender woman's identity to have her pull off a murder and basically like like that because she was able to transition from being a male to a female that that's why you didn't recognize her and now she killed you like i don't know i think that he really didn't think these things through think some of these the way that some of this would come across through and uh overall really hurt the series do you want to see a second season of the romanoffs no i don't um it's an eight episode anthology series, but like you said, they're all like 90 minutes long. So it's as long as a 12 episode series. Mm-hmm. And yet because it's an anthology series, the whole like, Oh, you just shrink the episode countdown. And it helps. But like you said, these ideas were not fleshed out enough that that wouldn't be a problem. And I think you just, it would just, it should have just been totally reworked. And at this point, I don't expect them to do another season because this one was so expensive anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it was a smart gamble by Amazon. Obviously, it's Matthew Weiner. He was still deserving of that check. Um, and again, they greenlit the show before any allegations came out against him. But it, it was—I mean, anyone would would have loved to have his next show, right? 
Um, and I think people will still be happy to have his next show after this. It's just uh, mm-hmm. this was not a ultimately not that successful, and it's unfortunate given the pedigree, you know, from all sides. But what are you gonna do?